Or you can come up with a way to process it out in the field using minimal water. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna to show you a way that I can process this with very minimal water and still get really good results. I'm as keen as mustard to see how much gold is in this fine stuff. One of the things that really really switches me on about WA is you just never know what's going to happen and you know it gets me up every morning every single day you just don't know what that day is going to bring and in recent days I have stumbled upon a very good run of specimens so I've been doing a lot of crushing and I'll show you what I've been crushing this is some of the stuff that I've been crushing and as you can see it's absolutely chock-a-block full of gold and there is visual gold virtually on every side of this little specky. So yeah this bloke here is an absolute cracker and I've found many others like it. So lots and lots of crushing. So what I normally do is when I crush materials I classify them down into different grades and then process them separately. Now this one here is between 12 and 30 mesh and is really effectively wet sieved. This is what I've been extracting from that coarse material using a wet sieving process. And I'll give it a shake. There's some really good chunky stuff in there and there's a fair bit of it. This is only the coarse material. And I'll show you what I've been left over with the material that drops through the 30 mesh sieve. Down here is just over half a bucket of super fine material. Now this is all a result of my crushing and as you can see it's almost like talcum powder. So this is anything that goes through my 30 mesh sieve. So super fine stuff. Now the best way to process this is of course to set up a little sluice box. Of course, the biggest problem with setting up a sluice box in Western Australia is there's virtually, in this part of the world at least, no running creeks at all. So really, the only way you can do it is to bucket it and take it home, or you can come up with a way to process it out in the field using minimal water. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna to show you a way that I can process this with very minimal water and still get really good results. I'm as keen as mustard to see how much gold is in this fine stuff. Considering what you saw in that little jar is coming out of the coarser material. So I really want to find out. Now there's only so much water that you can carry. So you need to maximise its use. And you don't want to waste any at all. So what I've done is I've come up with a way to process this right out here in the bush in WA with very limited water. In fact, I'm only gonna use about 30 litres of water. So let's go have a look. So what I've got here is a little mini self-reticulating sluice and in that tub of water I'm only using 30 litres. I've got two jerrys of water over there, 20 litre jerrys, 30 litres have gone into that tub and a tiny bit of water has gone into that tub for the final pan off. So I'll explain how I've set this up. First of all this little bad boy here is my little baby keen sluice and i just love it it's really just a fine sluice so it's perfect for the job 
and his big brother is the A5 from Keen, on which I did a video on how to set up a sluice box. Let's have a closer look at the setup. To put the sluice on top of this tub, because this is a very small tub, so limited space, I had to get a couple of blocks of wood so I could get the correct angle. A block of wood, a stick there, and a thicker branch there. And that gives me the angle that I need. That's a bungee cord, or you could use an ocker strap. And what that does is that holds the bottom end of the sluice down quite tightly. So any weight up this end won't cause it to tip. In here is a bilge pump, 12 volt operated, and this one moves about 1100 gallons per hour. That's connected to a drainage hose here, which you can see, and it makes its way all the way around. And I'll show you this here through a regulator valve, which enables me to control the flow. From there, it travels up into this bucket. And this bucket is essentially here to serve as a hopper. And there's a very good reason for that, and I'll go into that now. This is a concept that I came up with to regulate the flow into the head of the sluice. Now, when you put a small pump, even this small, into a very small sluice box like that, Normally the flow is just too fast It rushes in and rushes out so you need to be able to regulate that flow to a certain extent and This bucket was my fix. So what happens is the water drops down in to the back of the bucket then gets dispersed and If you look at the front of the bucket, I have cut a little slit now that slit serves as a delivery system for the head of the sluice and it's nice and thin so the water flows out nice and evenly you'll also notice in the bucket i have a couple of rocks they are there for a couple of good reasons number one to put some weight on the bucket so it sits firmly on the head of the sluice the other reason these rocks are here is they now become an adjusting factor twist them left or right to break up the initial rush of the water and therefore the water then flows around the side of them so what happens is by moving the rock left or right very similar to the same concept i used in my how to set up a sluice video but this time in a bucket i can then regulate that water before it goes out the slot now here's the beautiful part to get the direction or to center the flow into the head of the sluice, all I've got to do is just twist left or right until I get the flow exactly where I want it. And I'm going to show you how I do that in a minute. Now at the front of the tub, I have an ice cream container because its job is to catch the tailings. The reason why I want to catch the tailings are twofold. Firstly, they cause displacement, which then lifts the water, and eventually the water will start running out of the tub. So I don't want to lose my water, so I need to catch the tailings and periodically remove them. Secondly, they're not going into the main section of the tub, although you will still get silt, but it means that the bilge pump is not picking up tailings. These things aren't meant to pick up tailings or coarse material, just water. So it keeps the coarse material away from the pump, but also allows me to control the displacement in the tub. So the bilge pump being 12 volt, I just simply have that set up, ready to go with an Anderson plug. This is my auxiliary battery in my vehicle, and I have a spare Anderson auxiliary plug there to run stuff just like this. 
So all I do to turn him on is simply plug him in and away we go. Now a couple of limitations I should add before I get started is number one, this container which is going to catch the tailings. Once that fills up, I'm going to have to stop. Empty the tailings and then start again until I've emptied that bucket. Having said that though, because there's only just over half a bucket, I should be right. Now another limiting factor that I should add is the setup that I'm showing you here is for probably no more than a bucket worth of material. Because once you get beyond a bucket, if this let's just say I had four or five of these buckets full of this material, the problem I'm going to run into then is eventually that water will get so thick with sediment I'd get to the point where I'd have to change the water out completely. When the water becomes thick with sediment, the specific gravity properties start to change. So you want to try and avoid that. You should only run the minimum amount of material that you need to before the water starts getting real thick and murky. Now before I start actually putting the dirt through the sluice, one very important consideration, this being crushings and being so fine, there's a lot of dust in here. So eventually what's going to happen, if I run it through the sluice as it is, it's just going to silt it up and basically render the sluice ineffective. So through experience, I've realized the best way to combat that is you need to pre-wet it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water and I'm basically going to turn this into a porridge before I put it into the sluice. So I'm going to do that now. So it's a little bit like baking a cake. Add a bit of water, stir it in, and get it to a nice consistency just like porridge. And look, this is important because if you don't want to lose gold, you've got to pre-wet this material because if your sluice does silt up because of all the fine dust contained in this stuff then you're going to lose a lot of gold and most of the gold on this stuff here is super super fine so it will given half the chance float straight out the top so the best way to combat that is just to pre-wet it and that's pretty well the consistency we want a bit like a porridge the only other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to put one or two drops and only one or two drops of dishwashing detergent in the tub and that'll serve to break the surface tension of the water. I don't want to put more than one or two drops otherwise I'm just going to get bubbles everywhere and I might be able to see what's going on. Right, yeah, that's pretty well good to go. Okay, so I've plugged it in and away she goes. And I'll just show you what I meant by turning this bucket. Now, the flow that I've got here is actually pretty good. I did have to close that regulator valve just a little, just to slow the water down a little bit. I'll show you what I mean now by manipulating the bucket to get the right flow. If I turn it to the left, watch what happens. You see now the water is banking up on the left hand side of the sluice. If I turn it to the right, it's now banking up on the right hand side of the sluice. So by carefully manipulating it, I can set it right about there and now I'm getting a good even flow at the head of the first ripple. Now just like my video on how to set up a sluice box, I'm really only interested in what's happening with these first two ripples. As it turns out, the bottom ripples are running beautifully anyway. But the majority of the gold is going to get caught in this black matting and within these first two ripples. So really, that's my main concern. She's now ready to go, and let's get into it. Okay, we are good to go. You can see... A few bubbles there, I've only put two drops of dishwashing detergent in there. 
And here's my porridge. And you can spoon it in. And just keep an eye on that first ripple, make sure she's not clogging up. You can see what I mean by the bubbles. There's not too many though, that's good. And that's clearing out beautifully there below the first ripple, so that's fine. Anyway, I'm going to keep going and we'll get some shots of it further on. Alright, so I managed to put that whole half a bucket through and what I like to do is I like to run the sluice for about a minute or two once I put the last bit of dirt in just to let it clean out give it a chance for all the heavies to settle and all the lighter stuff to continue out of the sluice so I'll just let that run for about another 30 seconds or so and unfortunately the water's pretty dirty now so we can't really see anything while it's running but I'm going to point this out down here really hard to see you can see a slight yellow tinge. Once I stop this water though, we should be able to see a fair bit of colour sitting on this little sluice. Alright, well, I'll go switch it off and let's see what we got. Right, I've switched it off and as I said before, down there there's a whole lot of fine colour. There's some in front of the bucket there along the little drop off where the plastic rubber mat is joined I'll show you around here a lot of colour stuck in here in this section here now remember this is super fine stuff so I suspect once I take this out we're really going to see what's going on here and I bet you there's some good gold sitting under these rocks or just on the downside of them. There normally is. So that's another reason why I like using the bucket because it actually serves as an initial catching point, especially when you've got rocks in it. So what I'll do is I will take the bucket off and I'll just tip the sluice slightly forward so we can drain this water off and get a better look before we do the clean out. Okay, I've just taken the bucket off. And uh, when I put the bucket in the tub, the rock fell backwards. And check this out. This is all gold. That is all gold right there. Absolutely insane amount of gold right there. Didn't even get out of the bucket. How good is that? All right, we'll tip this up and see if we can see some more in the actual sluice. Rightio, I've tipped it up. And just below that bit of rubber matting there, you can see, even before it gets to the first riffle, it's just totally joggled like line with gold. I don't want to tip it any further, because I don't want to risk it going out the end of the sluice. So what I'll do is I'll dismantle the sluice, and I'll put it in this tub here, and we'll do a pan off and we'll get a true picture of what we got. Okay, so I've got her in the tub now, and check that colour out there, eh? Lots of colour in there, sugar block full of colour there. As I said before, just colour all the way along down here. Even up in the top part of the matting, there's colour. And you can see just all the gold just sitting there. Insane. Just gold everywhere. Oh, my goodness me. Just so much colour. Right, I. I'll do the clean out and we'll have a look at it. Okay, so I've cleaned the box out and I'm now doing the first pan off. Now these being concentrates, I'll pan these probably three or four times and especially considering that this is super fine gold, I'll probably even do it more. So I've got another pan under this one just to catch because I reckon this stuff's just going to keep giving. And I'm pretty keen to see this result. There was a lot of colour sitting in that sluice. 
and a lot of colour sitting in that bucket. So, I reckon that might be enough for the first twist and twirl. Let's have a look, eh? Oh, you can see that line of gold up the top of the pan already. Here it comes. Here it comes. Not quite sure how that big material got in there, but check that out. There is a lot of gold in this pan, and this is by no means all of it. I'll probably have to pan, as I said, at least four or five times. But that's probably just about half of it. There'd be, there'd be that again in this dirt. Have a go at that. That is some serious gold. A hell of a lot of fine colour as I thought there would be. Because the coarse stuff was pretty rich. And because there was, uh, by ratio, more fine stuff than coarse stuff once it was crushed. It just figures that there had to be more fine gold than coarse gold. So I'm going to continue panning this off. Once I've done that, we'll dry it out on the fire. And we'll do a bit of a weigh-in. Because I'm very curious to find out. Just how much gold was sitting in that half a bucket of fine crushed material. Right, yeah, so I've panned off the uh, concentrates several times. Around about five or six times, actually. Such was the concentration and how fine that gold was. And this is the result. Now, a couple of other things we need to do to it before we dry it out and weigh it. Extra water. That's better. So heavy it didn't want to come out. Right, oh. Let's check this out, eh? Oh, super fine stuff. That actually covered the bottom of that little bottle by around about two, three, maybe even up to four mil. So, really, have I got that much gold in my little snuffer bottle? But as I said, this is super fine material. Now, here she comes. You'll notice there's a lot of black material in it. Now, that is the product of my little crazy crusher. So, when I crush my material, Lots of iron filings and bits and pieces come off the jaw because there's a jaw crusher come off the teeth So we're gonna clean this up a bit more Before we dry it And this is how we do it I have one rare earth magnet here And I've got him sitting in a sandwich bag I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do So with my rare earth magnet, here he is here, I'm going to put that under the pan. I'm not going to put it on top of the pan, under the pan. And watch what happens when I do that. You can see it all bristling up. And the magnet is now picking up all the iron filings. And because it's such a strong magnet, I can actually drag it out of the way. And it leaves the gold behind. Now, because there's so much of it, as it clusters up against the magnet, it actually grabs bits of gold with it as well. So, I need to clean that out, and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. There's more up there we've got to get, and it helps if you put a bit of water in it. And give it a bit of a twist and a twirl. And I'm going to finish this now, and I'll show you the result. So right there at the back of the pan, you'll notice all those iron filings, which constitutes a fair bit of material, probably over half the stuff that I soaked up with my snuffer bottle. Now there'll still be little bits of gold in that. And this is where the sandwich bag comes in handy because you cannot get this stuff off this magnet. Here's, I've got him in the bag and check this out. Look at that. Just picks it up like magic. But, as I said, there's still going to be gold in that. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in that pan there. Oh yeah, so just to get this stuff into that pan, all I do is, I'll have to put the camera down to do it, is I will pull the magnet out of the bag and all the filings will just drop straight into the pan. So I've taken the magnet out and now I'm just making sure the bag is free of any metal filings. Making sure they drop into the pan. Put that off to the side. And now we can quickly check to see if we've left any gold trapped amongst it. And there'll probably be a few little bits considering how fine this gold was. Looks like we did a good job. Oh, one or two little specks. I don't know if you can see them. A couple of tiny shows of colour up the top and that's about it. And you know, for the amount of gold on that pan, really, that's negligible. So that's one way you can get those filings out of your pan. And this is a way you can check to see that you haven't picked up too much gold. And I'll sniff those ones up in a second and add them to the other pan. And that's it. That's all that got caught in those magnetic filings. Rightio. Let's have a look at the gold. Okay, let's check it out now. So we've got all the metal out of it. And there's still a bit of black sand there, but the majority of that stuff there now is gold. And if I do the old tap tap, look at it all start walking together. That is awesome. There is a lot of gold in that pan. Bit of a uh, backwash method there, just to get rid of that lighter material. Push them all up to the corner there. And, you know, really, really happy with the result. I suspected there was a lot of fine gold in that dirt. And I'm not disappointed. Pretty good result. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually dry this out. And we're going to weigh it up. And we'll see how much was, in fact, in that just a half a bucket of fine ground material. Okay, so there she is. All dried out, ready to weigh. Being the product of a specimen just like that. All crushed up, all the fine stuff, so let's give it away. Turn the scales on. And here we go. And yeah, look at that, 8.224 grams. That is absolutely outstanding for just half a bucket of that fine material. So a full bucket should pretty well give me half an ounce. Awesome. So there you go. It is possible to do a little bit of sluicing if you can set up a small reticulating system like I've shown you in this video with very limited water. I only use 30 litres of water in the actual tub and probably another 10 to 15 litres for the clean out and the panning off. 8.2 grams. Gotta be happy with that. Thanks for watching.